Hi and welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. We've been discussing externalities and we've found that when there's a positive externality the amount of production in a perfectly competitive market is less than the socially optimal level. And when there's a negative externality the amount of production in the perfectly competitive market is greater than the socially optimal level. Now because the market outcome is different to the socially optimal level that means we must have a dead weight loss at the market outcome. So in this presentation, we're going to ask, what is the dead weight loss of a perfectly competitive market when we have an externality? To answer this question, we're going to use a simple shortcut. Rather than working out consumer surplus, producer surplus, and then working out dead weight loss, we're going to take a shortcut. We're going to find social welfare and dead weight loss just from the marginal social cost and the marginal social value curves. How do we do that? Well, let's just take an abstract example. Pick a product. On the vertical axis, we have dollars. On the horizontal axis, we're going to have the quantity. And we're going to have our downward sloping marginal social value curve and our upward sloping marginal social cost curve. And let's ask a simple question. Let's pick a unit. Let's say there's the first unit, second unit, third unit. Let's pick this third unit of production of this product and ask a question. If that third unit of production is produced and sold, produced and consumed, what is the gain to society? Well, the total gain to society, the total gain, is going to be given by the area under our marginal social value curve. It's going to be given by this shaded area here, which tells us the total social value generated by that third unit. But we can't stop there because that third unit also costs something and we have to subtract the costs of producing that third unit of output from the value of consuming that third unit of output. Well, what's the total social cost of producing the third, that marginal unit of output? Well, that's going to be the area under our marginal social cost curve. So, what's the net gain to society when the third unit of output is produced and consumed? Well, it's the marginal social value, which is the area under the marginal social value curve. It's given by the height of the marginal social value curve. Minus the marginal social cost, which is given by the height of the marginal social cost curve, or the area under the marginal social cost curve for the third unit. So, our social gain from this third unit is simply the difference. It's going to be given by this area in here. The difference between the marginal social value and the marginal social cost for the third unit. Now we've done that for the third unit but of course we could do the same thing for the second unit and for the first unit. And if we did that, well, let's do it. For the second unit, the net gain to society from producing and consuming the second unit is the area under the marginal social value curve, less the area under the marginal social cost curve, it's that area there. And what about for the first unit? Well again, the social gain, the net social gain from consuming and producing. That first unit is going to be given by the area between the marginal social value curve and the marginal social cost curve. And we could keep going to whatever quantity we wanted. Notice, of course, that if we go way out here, past where the marginal social value equals the marginal social cost, if we go out to our fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh unit out here, then notice at that point our marginal social cost is above our marginal social value. So in that situation, we're going to have a negative gain to society. 
from producing and consuming the product. The gain to society is the area under the marginal social value curve, but that's less than the marginal social cost. So this is going to be a net loss if we produce out here. Whereas over here, we've got our net gain. So let's just summarise where we've got to. The net social gain from producing and consuming a unit of a product, let's say this third unit here, is simply the difference between the marginal social value and the marginal social cost of that unit. Marginal social value of consuming the unit versus the marginal social cost of producing the unit, including all the externalities, or that shaded green area that we've got here. Second thing we found out is that if we wanted to look at the total value created to society, including external costs and benefits, from say the first three units of production, well we simply have to look at the benefits from the first unit, plus the benefits from the second unit, plus the benefits from the third unit. So that is given by our total shaded area between our marginal social value and our marginal social cost curves all the way up to the third unit. Finally, if we produce too many units of a product, if we go, say, way out here where the marginal social cost is above the marginal social value, then we start creating negative social value. Or in other words, we start creating units that reduce social value rather than increasing social value. Mathematically, we can summarise this as follows. For any quantity Q, the total social surplus created by producing and consuming Q units is given by the integral from zero to Q units of the difference between marginal social value and marginal social cost, which is just a fancy way of saying the area under the marginal social value curve less or minus the area under the marginal social cost curve from zero to Q units. And it's easy to see that the quantity that maximises total social value, this quantity Q star, is going to be at the point where the marginal social cost and marginal social value curves intersect. How do we see that? Well, notice that at that point, the total social value minus the total social cost of producing that number of units is given by this big triangle off here to the left. Notice that if we go past Q star, we're going to start creating negative values. So we know we don't want to go past Q star because we'll start throwing away social value. But we also don't want to stop before we get to Q star, because if we stop before we got to Q star, we wouldn't get some of that triangle. So our social optimum, or the best we can do as a society, is to have production and consumption at the point where marginal social value intersects or is equal to marginal social cost. But what if we did stop before we got to Q star? What if we stopped at this quantity here, Q? Notice that the quantity Q then total gain to society from producing and consuming Q units is given by this area. It's no longer the big triangle, it's less than the big triangle. We've lost some social surplus compared to the optimum, and that loss is given by this triangle over here. We've lost this triangle of social surplus compared to the situation where we maximise social welfare. What does that mean? Well, by definition, this purple triangle here is the deadweight loss of producing at a level Q rather than the social optimum of Q star. And what if we went too far? What if we ended up producing at level of output Q rather than Q star? What happens then? Well, we still get our big triangle over here, the social value associated with the level of Q output Q star, but notice that we also have 
this area out here, which is production and consumption, where the marginal social cost is above the marginal social value. So our total gain from trade when we produce Q is this red triangle minus this purple triangle. The purple triangle is a loss. The units where marginal social cost is above marginal social value. So those two triangles together give us our social value from producing Q. What's our deadweight loss? Well, that's easy. The deadweight loss is the loss associated with overproduction. It's this triangle here. It's the loss compared to simply producing at Q star and getting this big triangle. So the deadweight loss of producing Q is given by this purple triangle out here to the right. So let's go back to our earlier examples and work out our deadweight loss of a perfectly competitive market. So let's start off with the case of Sweaty Sam and let's work out his deadweight loss. Remember that for Sweaty Sam, 3.4 squirts of deodorant was the socially optimal level. And if Sam actually did those amounts of squirts, then the total social welfare or social surplus created by 3.4 squirts of deodorant is simply the area under the marginal social value curve, above the marginal social cost curve, up to that quantity. It's this big triangle here. But we know if left to himself, Sam will not consume 3.4 squirts of deodorant. He will consume where demand and supply intersect at 3 squirts of deodorant. So the social welfare created by Sam in a perfectly competitive market is the area under the marginal social value curve, above the marginal social cost curve, but only out to 3 squirts of deodorant, only out to this point out here. So we don't get the big triangle anymore. The difference between the big triangle and the amount of social surplus actually created in the marketplace, this little triangle in here, that is our deadweight loss. It's a deadweight loss associated with the perfectly competitive market. The perfectly competitive market doesn't take the positive externality into account. It doesn't lead to socially optimal production it leads to a deadweight loss. What about our second example, our negative externality from the production of electricity? Electricity market again with a quantity of electricity down here and remember that the socially optimal level of electricity is simply going to be where the marginal social cost of electricity and the marginal social value of electricity intersect. It's at this level Q star so our social welfare or our gains from trade created by the socially optimal level of electricity production is this purple triangle over here. But the perfectly competitive electricity market does not take the negative externality of pollution into account. So we get too much production and consumption of electricity. What's the social surplus associated with that level of production and consumption? Well, we still get the area associated with Q star. The problem here isn't underproduction, the problem here is overproduction. So we still get that purple triangle of social welfare, but the trouble is we don't stop at Q star. We keep going and get a negative area of social welfare. We get an area out here where the marginal social cost of electricity production, given by the upward sloping blue line here, is greater than the marginal social value, given by the downward sloping blue line, and we've got to subtract that red triangle to get the social welfare of producing the market quantity. So, what's our deadweight loss in the perfectly competitive electricity market? It's just a loss due to the overproduction. It's that negative red shaded triangle out here. It's the cost minus the value for all of these units between Q market and Q star, which are overproduced. 
where marginal social cost is above marginal social value. So that area there, our red shaded area, is simply our dead weight loss. So let's finish up summarising what we've seen. A positive externality leads to too little trade in a perfectly competitive market and that results in a dead weight loss. It's a dead weight loss due to underproduction, not producing units even though the marginal social value of those units is above the marginal social cost. When we have a negative externality, there's too much trade in a perfectly competitive market and that leads to a dead weight loss as well. But it's a dead weight loss due to overproduction. It's overproduction, we're producing some units where the marginal social cost is above the marginal social value and society would be better off if we reduced the amount we produced and consumed and stopped producing those units that actually lead to a loss rather than a gain. Now, in case you've been wondering about the bird noises and uh, also the dog panting in the background, I'm actually in Cairns where it's about 33 degrees, feels more like 37, massive humidity, so uh, I'm going for a beer. So John, Cheers. Oh, let's get this on the video. Oh, somewhere over here. Cheers. Cheers. See you next time.